Well, good morning. I've never felt so much like back in the schoolhouse than this morning with all this joyful noise going on, first thing. I want to welcome you to this first Sunday in January. This is the day of Epiphany. Uh, today is the day we celebrate the arrival of the wise men to see the baby Jesus. If you were my mother, you would say your Christmas tree has to be down by today. And that, <laughs> anybody else have that at your house? Amen. Uh, actually, my son-in-law, who knows these things better than I do, says it took about two years for the wise men to get there, but I'm thinking that's because they wouldn't stop and ask directions. But today we celebrate their amazing discovery. Before we get started this morning, there are a few things I want to mention. The flowers on the altar this morning are given by Lisa and Scotty Mayfield in honor of the music program during the Advent season. Personally, I know that Abby and Andrew and Tristan just outdid themselves with the music and the celebrations and the uh, reverence of what we were given during the month of December. Um, we are grateful to Miss Lisa, Mr. Scotty, and our team of musicians back there. I talked to uh, Carol Cincy this morning, and she says adult fellowship is tomorrow night, and you do not need an admission ticket to get in. Tomorrow is just uh, uh, food and uh, fellowship. They want to get home in time for some of them to watch some kind of football game that's going on. <laughs> but uh, So there's no program tomorrow, but they'd love for you to join the group, anybody. Even if you don't feel like an adult today, anybody can join the adult fellowship team. They meet on the second Monday of each month. Uh, trustees, all you trustee people, this is a reminder, we're going to meet at 5.30 tomorrow in the conference room. And youth, or anyone who is feeling particularly youthful, Mandatory resurrection meeting for parents and youth this Wednesday at 6 p.m. in the gathering space. You need to have paperwork all ready and signed, and hopefully they'll get you ready to go. Uh, the worship committee is giving you an opportunity to uh, have a hymnal in your pew. Some of them are getting a little well-loved, and we're going to replace some of them a great number of them, and if you'd like to honor somebody in our church or remember somebody who's had a significant impact on your life in this church, you may do so by calling the church office. It's a $35 donation, and they'll put a nice little plaque in the, in the front of it to honor a friend or a mentor or just a loved one that uh, you, you, if you would like to do that. In your... In your bulletin, there is quite an quite a lot of information about the warming center, some things that they are requesting and some things that they need. So it, you can take that with you and see how you can address um, that need this week. There is no book study this week on Wednesday night, but there's room in the choir if you'd like to come sing with the choir next week. So you can come and join the choir on Wednesday night, and and we will open you. We will welcome you with open arms. So, are there any other announcements for the good of the group? Then let's open our hearts and our minds for the worship of Christ as we begin our service. Thank you. 
He always puts our hearts in the right place when he begins, and it's always a blessing to hear what Tristan has to offer. It's, uh, I would like for you to join me in our opening prayer. Print it in your bulletin. Holy and merciful God, we gather as your church, called to confess you as Lord and Savior to a world that knows you not, called to proclaim, like Peter, the truth of who you are. Grant us, we pray, clarity of purpose, courage of conviction, and compassion for those who have lost their way. Amen. Would you, it's a guessing game today. If you had to guess, what would you say we'd sing today? It's Epiphany Sunday. We Three Kings, hymn number 254, would you stand as you're able and join in We Three Kings. standing and join me in the Apostles' Creed found on page 881 in the back of your hand. Number 881. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, isn't it a wonder, the things that we know. We can say the Apostles' Creed, the things that we believe without even hardly looking at the hymnal. We can sing We Three Kings, the first verse, without even looking at the words. When it comes to the second and the third verse, we got to look at the words, right? I was with a, a nine-year-old during the, the bowl game that I attended last week. And he could name every quarterback of the NFL. I quizzed him. I, I said, who's with the Carolina Panthers? And he could tell me. Who, what's his stats? And, and he could tell me, you know, how many interceptions he's had, how many touchdowns. But if you ask him his fractions <laughs> for the fourth grade, he could struggle with that. So it's all about what we know, right? It's all about what we give our attention to. Today we give our attention to knowing about the wise men coming and searching for, for Jesus and and uh, finding Jesus, and we come to a scripture a little later today about Jesus uh, approaching the disciples and, and asking them who they think he is, asking them, you know, who, who they think Jesus is. But on this Sunday of Epiphany, a Sunday of discovery, as we come to a time of prayer, I hope that, that we will search our own hearts, our own lives as we come to this time of prayer. I ask that uh, as we come to this time of prayer, are there concerns that uh, you bring before each other that we can be in prayer for as uh, we pray for each other? And I'm going to grab my phone because there's one that I need to mention to y'all, but my brain has, uh, that information has left my brain. Y'all ever have those moments? That never happens to y'all, right? Every day? Every moment of every day? Y'all have uh, concerns that you would like to mention this morning? Carlton. Okay. Ellen, uh, Carlton's sister, has uh, some abdominal surgery on Wednesday. We can be in prayer for her. Other concerns? Okay. Sister and her husband that is very ill. Some of y'all may know Jean Ahrens that was a longtime member here at, at uh, Keith. Uh, she passed away on Thursday uh, of this week. Uh, I talked to uh, her son on, on Friday, and uh, he is unsure of her arrangements uh, yet. But uh, I know that you will want to uh, be in prayer for Jean's family. Uh, she was uh, uh, just a, a wonderful member uh, here at Keith. Uh, did not get a chance to know her, but from some of the uh, stories that I've heard, uh, she was a, a wonderful lady, but I know that you will want to be in prayer for her. Are there other concerns that we could be in prayer for? I know COVID and uh, the flu is still going around. Everybody stay well. Yep. I've got a, a clergy friend that both her husband and uh, she has uh, co have, have COVID right now. They're trying to juggle taking care of two little boys in the midst of all that. 
Are there joys that we can celebrate this morning? I see our color, coloring table filled with uh, youthful joy over here this morning. Always makes me smile. And they're being very quiet for some reason, which is a beautiful too. <laughs> yeah. Let's not get them wound up yet, right, Jamie? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Rick, you had one? Awesome, very nice. A granddaughter <laughs> on their way, all right. Congratulations, very nice. So six grandsons and two granddaughters. Congratulations. The joy, Lisa. Wonderful. Wonderful. Helen Bender, that we've been praying for for uh, many years, is uh, in remission now. So uh, that's, a, that's a praise indeed. Other joys. <laughs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. So Charles's sister that we've been praying for that has had cancer, just had a scan, and uh, has now been determined that she's cancer-free. So uh, we give God praise for that. Other joys that we can celebrate. Let's go to God in prayer this morning and prepare our hearts for prayer. God, what a sweet time it is as we can join together as your people around this time of worship, as we stop to uh, give you praise and honor, as we stop to worship you this morning. And God, we do worship you, the King of the universe, King of creation, the one who has created this earth and everything that is in this earth, the one who continues to uh, recreate this earth and everything in it. God, we stop this morning to slow down our lives enough <laughs> to pray. Not because we have to, but because we want to, because we desire to be in communication with the creator of the earth, because we desire to be in in a conversation with the one who loves us enough to hear us when we pray. God, I pray that we would take a minute of silence, a moment of, of just silencing our heart and our mind to just lift up to you our concerns, the things that, that keep us awake at night, the things that burden our heart, but that we would also lift up to you our gratitude, our joy, the things that we can give you thanks for. God, during this moment of silence, may you hear our prayers as we pray to you.
God, how beautiful silence is in our lives. We can take a minute and just be silent before you. And I pray that just as the wise men were on a discovery to find you, to seek you out, that, God, we would be on that same discovery today. That we would seek you and find you. That we would be uh, intentional about looking for you in our daily life. God, forgive us when we fail you. And seek us out. Continue to seek us out. Receive us just as we are. Forgive us when we fail you and, and we hurt other people. Forgive us when we just don't know what we're doing. And receive unto us just as we are. Just as we are. This day and ever. We give you thanks for the forgiveness and the restoration of life that you offer to us. And we say a prayer just as you taught your early disciples to pray. And we say these words by praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, we continue to worship this morning by the giving of our tithes and our offerings, knowing that this is an act of worship that we give back to.
oh God, and may you take these gifts and receive them into your care and multiply them in your kingdom in this world. In the name of Christ, amen. I want to ask that you remain standing for the reading of the gospel lesson this morning. I want to come out of the gospel of Matthew, chapter 16. You can follow along in your uh, bulletin or uh, the pew Bible there in front of you. Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they say, some say John the Baptist, but others say Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter. And on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. And this is the word of God for us, the people. You may be seated. Friends, isn't it funny sometimes how we can have different personalities and show those different personalities at different times? I was uh, at the emergency warming center that we had down at the old BB&T uh, bank building in December. I was sitting around talking to some of the guests that we had, and, and Greg, one of the guests, uh, said, you look familiar, where do I know you from? And I said, well, Greg, you may have known me from, from Keith Methodist, I'm the pastor up there. He goes, yes, yes, I remember you from, from there being... Uh, being there last year, you're one of the nicest ladies I've ever met. I said, well, I don't, well, thank you. <laughs> he said, you're one of the nicest ladies I've ever met. I said, well, Greg, I don't know about that. He goes, you are. You're just so nice all the time. I took that with a grain of salt. Because I could be nice during the times when I'm sitting at the warming center. But you don't want to be sitting next to me at a ball game. <laughs> because when I'm watching the Citrus Bowl or a ball game, when I'm getting very into, I'm not a very nice person. I'm a very competitive person. Because when I'm watching a ball game, I'm very intense. Wyatt, I can get very intense when I'm watching football. I'm not a very nice person. I'm like more like, Beat Georgia in the ground. Break his leg. Come on. <laughs> Knock him in the face. <laughs> you know, I'm all, I'm, I just get so competitive. It's the same, I'm the same person. You know what I'm talking about, him and Dorfer? You know, it's the same person, but just a different personality, right? It's that killer instinct that comes out. We see in this passage the different personalities that, that Peter brings to the table. What we see is that Jesus comes to the disciples and he asks a very simple question. But it, but it becomes a pretty complex question for the disciples. He asks, who do people say that I am? Who do people say that, that Jesus is? Who do people say that I am? And, and you can almost see the, uh, the, the disciples say, well, you know, Jesus, some people say you're John the Baptist. Some people say uh, Jeremiah or one of the prophets or Isaiah. You know, that's what people are saying. You could, you could be John the Baptist, come back to life. Or, or, or one of the prophets. And Jesus is taking this, and, and he's kind of weighing it and, and stuff, and he's, he's listening to it. And with his tongue in his cheek, I think, 
You know, he looks at the disciples and said, all right, but who do you say that I am? It's not enough to say, what do other people say about me? He turns it around, he says, all right, what do you say that I am? And I imagine all the disciples looking down at their feet all of a sudden. Because everybody's getting all nervous. It's getting personal, right? Everybody but Peter. Peter jumps up and he says, well, without hesitation, Peter responds, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. Without hesitation, Peter jumps up and asserts that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the one that they've been waiting for. And Peter got the answer right. And he exhibits praise from Jesus. Jesus says that, that Peter got the answer right and, and it came not from hu- human reasoning, but that it came from God. That God had, had given him this. And Peter's response uh, was that, that um, Jesus' response to Peter was, was that he changed his name from Peter to Simon. Saying that the, the new church, this, this new way of, of knowing God, would be built upon Peter, the rock. Jesus says, you are now to be known as the rock, and upon this rock, I will build my church. See, Peter's personality, he got it right. He was in the right place at the right time with the right answer. But if you read right after this passage, Peter's the hero until he's not. Because right after this passage, Jesus is describing the the suffering that he's going to Jerusalem to face. And Peter is the one that's saying, oh, Jesus, Jesus. That is not the way that this is supposed to happen. You're supposed to be the Messiah that is supposed to come in and reign. You're supposed to be the Messiah that is, that is supposed to come in and take over. Jesus is saying, Peter, you got it all wrong. Get behind me. I'm the Messiah that's supposed to suffer. I'm the Messiah that is going to come and to free Israel from oppression and to bring justice and peace. You see, Jesus' hope is that the kingdom would involve suffering and death. And that's not something that Peter could understand. You see, the same question that Peter that that Jesus asked the disciples, who do you say that I am? It appears in three Gospels. It appears in Matthew and Mark and Luke. It appears in Matthew and Mark when things are are really busy, when there's a lot of activity going around, when when there's a lot of of things going, um, when, when things are really busy around Jesus, a lot of activity, Jesus is asking the disciples who they think he is. And in Luke, it happens when things are really quiet and really still. And and Jesus asks the disciples in this quietness who they say he is. Isn't that sometimes the way it happens in our life? That sometimes when our life is, is really busy and noisy, when we've got a lot going on, maybe it's in those moments that, that our life is, is going crazy that, that we stop and we ask, well, well, who am I supposed to be listening to in the first place? Which voice am I supposed to be following and listening to? Maybe it's in those still moments that when life is quiet, When life is still, maybe in the middle of the night when when you can't sleep and 
And you're asking, you know, what is the meaning of life in the first place? What is this all about? See, I think our most honest and authentic prayers are the parts of our soul when we cry out to God, God, where are you? Who are you? And who am I in relationship to you? See, I think the question that Jesus asks the disciples, who who do you say that I am, was just the opening act for, for Jesus to say, well, who do you say? We're going to be looking at at a lot of questions, the the questions that Jesus asks as we go throughout this series, but but this is the most important question. This will be the foundation of what we build upon. Who do we say Jesus is? Who is Jesus to us? And it's not enough to know theologically or, or doctrinally who Jesus is. It's all about how we will know how this impacts our life. Do we really believe that Jesus is the Christ of God? Do we really believe that Jesus is the Christ in our life? And if we really believe that, then we're going to follow what Jesus says in the gospel. We're not just going to follow it on Sundays, when our personalities are like Christ, we're going to follow it every day. We're going to follow the commands of Jesus where, where Jesus says you need to say to yourself, take up the cross and follow me. We're going to follow the, the commands of Jesus when he says to lose your life in order to save it. And we're going to gain the whole, and we're going to follow the commands of Jesus in gaining the whole world and saving our reputation no longer matters. Several years ago, and it's still a thing, I think, where you can get a a band that said WWJD. Have you all seen those bands? What do they stand for? What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do? And that's a great question to ask, right? What would Jesus do in this situation? And I don't wear one of those bands. I'll be quite honest. I'm not sure if that's the question we should be asking. I think the question we should be asking is more dangerous than that. I think the question... A more appropriate question, just in my opinion, since y'all have asked this morning, (laughs) a more appropriate question would be, what would Jesus have me do? Right? Not what would Jesus do, but what would Jesus have me do? The emphasis is not on Jesus, but on us. And I think Jesus has empowered us, put within us the Holy Spirit in order for us to be empowered to do the things that Jesus would do. To do the things that if Jesus was here on earth, to do the things that Jesus would do. John Wesley would say that we are moving on toward perfection. That we have the Holy Spirit inside of us and we are moving towards sanctification would be that fancy word. But on this New Year Sunday, the first Sunday of the New Year, I would challenge you in, in knowing that the only thing that matters is orienting our life toward living out the kingdom of God in this world. Who do we say Jesus is 
every day, not just on Sundays at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Who do we say Jesus is? And not just ask the question, well, what would Jesus do if he were here in my situation? But be willing to ask the question, what would Jesus have me do? Because friends, that's a dangerous question, right? It's a dangerous question. And are we willing to accept the answer? Only you can answer it. I pray for you. I pray for me. To be willing to, to answer that question every day. Let me pray. Oh God, give us the boldness to be able to answer the question of discipleship of truthfulness, of being able to reach in and follow Jesus every day. May your truth continue to speak to us, we pray in the name of Christ. Amen. Friends, I ask that you take your hymnal and join with me on page 12. Serve us a word and table as we come around the table of communion this morning. Christ our Lord invites to His table all who love Him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved You with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. We have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. Holy. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is God, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory.
and we feast in, at His heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I ask those who are assisting in the serving of communion to come forward at this time. Body of Christ that is broken for us. The blood of Christ that is shed for us.
Friends, we're going to conclude our service today by singing hymn number 251, Go Tell It on the Mountain. Uh, we certainly have good news to tell, and I'm going to do like I did on uh, Christmas Eve. If you don't sing joyfully the first time, we're going to stop and try it again. <laughs> so uh, I would encourage you to sing joyfully 200, 251, Go Tell It on the Mountain. for effort on that. <laughs> Friends, may we go from this place realizing that we have good news to tell, that Jesus is born in each one of our lives, and that we have a message to go and tell. May that be our message, and that may, may be our promise today. Go in peace. Amen.